Uh, hi everybody, I'm Becky and um, I'm a writer. I've worked with Box of Tricks quite a lot before and I also um, write for TV and for radio. Um, and so part of why I thought this might be an interesting kind of topic for a workshop is if any of you are interested in screenwriting or writing for TV, you kind of always have to do a lot of pitching and outlining. And I found as a writer who's started in theatre and who very much sort of started writing things on spec like just because I had an idea for a play in my head and just kind of splurged it out I found that transition to having to pitch ideas without writing the script really difficult and I felt really like why don't you let me just write it and then you'll see that it's good you know I found it really hard to think about how I made an idea sing without actually writing the script for it and then one of the things that I've noticed and I don't know if it's just happened to me because of where I'm at in my career or if it's a general shift in theatre but I've found that theatre are kind of asking people to pitch a little bit more than they used to and looking for sort of outlines and treatments rather than a whole script and that there might be call outs or opportunities that are actually asking you to pitch either to a theme or kind of you know what's the idea that you're burning to write so I thought that actually for writers whether you're writers with theatre writers and you're looking to move into other forms where pitching is more common or even just as a theatre writer if you're asking to do it more often that actually it might be quite interesting to explore um, how as a writer you kind of see pitching and outlining as like a joyous thing to write in the same way that a script can be and because I know that when I first started I was very like oh I've got to write this outline for this thing or I've got to write this pitch for this thing and not really seeing it as a creative document more seeing it as kind of a means to an end and I've found for me that um the trick is to kind of love writing them and put as much kind of craft and art into writing them as you would into writing the script itself. So there's a kind of caveat that I've not done a screenwriting masters or a script writing masters and that if they teach you how to pitch, they might teach you differently. So these are just things that I kind of think based on my experience of working and pitching and the kind of, techniques and ways that I found to make it a more enjoyable and useful process. So if you read Save the Cat or any of those screenwriting books, they might tell you different formulas for pitching. This isn't necessarily that, but hopefully it'll give you some tools that you find kind of useful. Um, at the end, we'll do a kind of Q&A, but if at any point I'm talking too fast or anything I say or any of the terminology, sometimes you kind of use these words and assume everyone knows them, but actually if there's any other kind of language that you want to ask or any questions as we go along, just either put them in the chat or just wave a hand. Um, so, because I guess the first thing on terminology is the sessions called outlines, treatments and pictures. Um, and those terms get used kind of slightly interchangeably sometimes and sometimes someone will ask you for an outline or they'll ask you for a pitch or they'll ask you for a treatment and you'll be kind of like well what kind of document do they actually mean by that broadly speaking how I think of it is that um, a pitch and an outline are usually selling documents so a pitch or an outline is usually a document that is you communicating to someone else like a producer or someone you want to make this script your intent for the piece so a pitch is like your vision for everything you imagine this piece could be and a treatment or a beat sheet they're sometimes called um or sometimes that might be called a scene by scene, they're usually more like a working document, which is maybe someone's already working with you on the script, but they're not ready to go to script yet. They want to see a bit more detail about how you're gonna achieve that vision. So broadly speaking, a pitch is more like a, this is my objective for this piece of art and a treatment or an outline is more like, and this is how I'm going to achieve that. Um, does that make sense? Broadly speaking, you might also hear the term one pager and a one pager is usually like a short pitch that's a one page document. You might hear a two pager or a 10 pager. And again, they usually just 
mean a longer version of the pitch, depending on what the company or the producer that you're working with is looking for. Um, we're going to do some practical exercises and for the exercises we'll mostly concentrate on pictures so those kind of selling documents those this is the idea in my head and I'm letting you into it kind of documents um but sometimes particularly for writers who work in theatre outlining is quite a new concept rather than just writing a first draft so maybe when we do the Q&A at the end if anyone has questions about kind of how the outlining process works in other forms or I actually outline for theatre now as well, because I'm kind of so in the habit of it. So we might talk a little bit about outlines more later on, but we'll probably mostly focus on those kind of pitching cell documents. Um, and for these exercises, it would be useful if you either have a work in progress in your head that you can use for them. So it might be a script that you've already finished, but that you want to think about, okay, if I was going to sell this to somebody, how would I sell it? It might be something that you have that's just the seed of an idea at the moment and you use the exercises to help you formulate it more. If you haven't got a um, work in progress that you're particularly thinking about, then the best thing would probably be to think of like, a traditional tale and try out the exercises on that so maybe think okay I'm pitching my version of Cinderella to whatever art form you want to do it in so either a work in progress or a traditional tale when we're thinking about these exercises um, and so what we'll do is kind of break down the main things that a pitch usually needs and kind of do an exercise riffing around each of those so one of the biggest things that you'll get asked whenever you're pitching an idea um, is why this story and why this story now particularly so why you want to tell it why this story now so why this is a story for like 2022 or whatever it is and also and this is a question that um i think a lot of writers struggle with for various reasons why you like why are you the writer to tell this story and I think it's I find that difficult because I think it's often asked with really good intentions to make sure that people are getting a chance to tell their own stories but what it can do is make you feel like especially if it's a story that's very personal to you it can make you feel like you've got to talk about something very personal to you to say that you want to tell this story because of an experience that happened to you and then when they turn around and are like mm, no actually we're not really interested in that story that can feel a very sort of exposing thing to do um so i personally i'm not really a fan like i probably wouldn't choose to in a pitching meeting talk about personal experiences unless it was something that i already talked about a lot quite openly but i might still want to write about some of those experiences without actually saying I want to tell this because it happened to me um, and so I think it's about finding a way to communicate that kind of connection to the story without feeling like you have to kind of open up more than you feel safe or comfortable doing and also um, and this is probably something we could talk about for hours um, also I think a lot of writers don't like that question because a lot of writers think well it doesn't have to have happened to me or I don't have to have had personal experience of this to be interested in and empathize with and want to tell this story so sometimes it feels like the answer to the question why you is just well because I'm the person sat here pitching this and it's a good story um but you do need to find a way however comfortable or not you are with that question you do need to find a way to prove that you're the person to tell this story and that you can do this story justice and to kind of demonstrate that passion for and connection for that story um and it's a funny balance because often people want to know that you've got lots of ideas and lots of stories but you've kind of got to make it seem like each one is the one that you're absolutely burning to tell above all others so um this exercise is kind of about that. So thinking about either your current work in progress or your own version of Little Red Riding Hood for the purposes of this, we're gonna do an exercise. Um, and I'm gonna give you, let's say five, exactly five minutes to write. 
And for that time, I want you just to write, I want to tell this story because, and as many sentences as you can that begin, I want to tell this story because, and just keep writing for the whole five minutes. And if you get stuck, just keep writing, I want to tell this story because, I want to tell this story because, I want to tell this story because, until you become unstuck. And those reasons might be some of those personal reasons that you wouldn't necessarily share in the pitch, but that it's useful for you to know you've got that connection. They might be practical reasons, like I want to tell this story because I think it's commercial, or it might be I want to tell this story because my best mate's just like this and I've never seen anyone like her in a play before. So it doesn't matter what those reasons are and they can be stupid. Like it can be like, I want to tell this story because I think the costumes would look great. You know, there's no right or wrong. Just keep it right in. Um, and the reason that I like to do things like this under kind of timed conditions is you sometimes then get past the obvious reasons and surprise yourself with some things that you'll think, oh, I didn't know that was why I wanted to tell this story. So five minutes on the clock and just keep writing as many sentences as you can. I want to tell this story because, okay, on your marks, get set, go. Okay, great. And once you've got your list, um, I'm not going to ask anyone to share their lists, um, but it might be interesting if anyone's got any feedback at this point of anything that kind of surprised you or anything that kind of doing that grew up, then um, you're welcome to share that now before we move on to the second part of this exercise. Um, Okay, so what I'd like to do for the second part of the exercise is read back over your list and try and distill a paragraph that answers the question, why this story now and why do you want to tell it? That you could kind of present as a paragraph. You don't have to present it like now, tonight to each other, but reading back over your list then just take some time and have a go at crafting a paragraph of, that answers the question, why this story now and why are you the person to tell it? Does that make sense? And maybe we'll spend a bit longer. So let's spend like, um, let's take 10 minutes to work on these. Um, and we'll talk about this a little bit more later on, but in pictures, one of the big things is brevity. Like, people who read pictures are reading a lot of pictures so um when I say a paragraph I mean like four or five sentences like you want to get to the point that you're trying to make as quickly as possible so why this story now and why are you the person to tell it and we'll regroup in 10 minutes so it like just before 10 past is that okay great Um, great. So if you um, if you've not finished, if you're still doing your paragraph, just just keep on while we kind of talk about how that. I mean, if anyone's got one that they'd like to share, that would be interesting. Um, or if anyone's got anything that they'd like to share about how they found the process of doing that, how you found going from your list into the paragraph, what was them? Um, yeah, anything either. If you'd like to either share your paragraph or if anyone's got anything that they'd like to kind of comment on, on how they found the experience of the exercise, then now is an opportunity to do that. So it's a bit weird on Zoom, isn't it? To like unmute yourself and be like, here's the thing I really want to say. But um, if anyone does want to share, then now is your moment. I'll share them, I'll share something. I found the first part really good and brought out a lot just in terms of those sentences and then again it was just the total opposite when I've tried to condense that into the paragraph I found it really difficult and it was just going back to being really um vague and I wasn't pulling the you know the central meaning out of each sentence well I haven't up to now anyway it's quite difficult yeah I think it is I think that really for me that sums it like, that you can really know why that's why I I think is so difficult that you can really know why kind of you want to tell this story 
and feel it, but finding a way to communicate that, particularly um, on the page, is really difficult, um, I think. And I think one of the ways that you can do that is through writing a really good pitch in some of the exercises that we've come to later. So if, for example, I mean, a lot of what I write is quite character driven, I think. Um, so often my why I want to write something is because I've met someone or come across someone who I found kind of inspiring or intriguing and I want to put them in something. Um, so instead of saying that in my pitch, what I would try and do is kind of really bring that character to life on the page. Um, and I think that's the big thing that sometimes, or if it's like, this idea is really hard hitting because it's about a social issue that's really powerful, then you need to make your pitch really powerful. Like you need to really kind of get that into your pitch. Like, so if there's um, an image that illustrates what you're talking about, try and get that into your pitch. Or if your pitch is the reason you want to tell the story is because you think it's really funny, then your pitch needs to be really funny. And it kind of sounds obvious, but sometimes we have a tendency to write, this will be a really funny play, but the pitch doesn't make anyone laugh at all. So if, if what you're saying is it's going to be funny, then your pitch has to be funny. If what you're saying is it's going to be moving, and this is, this is hard, I think, but if what you're saying is it's going to be moving, then whoever's reading your document needs to be moved by reading it. So whatever you think the piece is going to be, the pitch needs to be too. And sometimes that's actually easier than the why me, why now? And the other thing with the why now is sometimes um, it depends on what you write and how overtly state of the nation what you write is, but I think it can be really good to find an illustrative statistic that sums up or an illustrative example that sums up. So if you think um, the rise of social media is kind of interesting and important and urgent or whatever, um, then you'll be able to find a statistic that backs that up or find a story that backs that up. And I think you don't like litter your pitch with those, but if you can find a few kind of nuggets of statistics or real world examples that back up what you're trying to say, that can do some of the work for you. Um, and it's an interesting one because some writers really hate pitching verbally. Um, because they're more like introverted or not kind of, you know, they feel kind of awkward pitching verbally. But actually, I think some of that I want to tell this story because I personally find it easier to do that in a face to face conversation with somebody. Um, and it can slightly depend at what stage you're pitching something. So with theatre, I have found generally that when I've pitched things, sometimes there's been some kind of face-to-face -face discussion beforehand and you're like following it up. So like um, when Adam and I worked on Tip Shop Chips together, I kind of was just like, oh Adam, I'd really like to do a love story that's set in a chip shop. And he was like, oh yeah, that might be interesting. And then I followed it up with a document once we'd already had kind of a bit of a chat and you already had a bit of a sense of where the common ground was. It's harder to get that across if the pitch is like a cold read. For somebody um but that's the that's the kit that's what that's the you know that's what you're trying to do you're trying to get everything that's in those I want to tell this because without saying that you're trying to really get that into your pitch and at the top of your pitch as well I'd say that the first thing is like this is why this story matters is what I would usually put like right in the first bit and then use the rest of the pitch to back that up um Anyone else got anything they wanted to feedback? Did, did anyone find the paragraph easier to do than the sentences or find um, them equally kind of? Um, I, I was just going to say that I really liked the sentences. And then when I started putting it into the paragraph, I, I was saying all the same things. I think all the same reasons, but for some reason, when I was like trying to write, I took me, I, when I read it back, I was like, oh, I've totally taken me out of this. Like, 
and, and really they're connected I think by the reasons why I think it's an important story also the reasons why like I want to be the person to write it sort of thing but yeah I kind of read it from this weird dispassionate place in the paragraph like I'm doing a I'm a journalist or something rather yeah. Than, um yeah which is interesting I don't, I don't know something about the voice of it went a bit formal and weird I think that's really true I like um it's really easy to turn it into like you're writing a job application rather than and and the, and the key is to make it not like that like the key is to really make it a piece of art still that your pitch is still kind of a really good read and is still um in your voice so there's certain kind of points that your pitch needs to hit but it still really needs to be in your voice and I um definitely haven't nailed like I definitely like um and I think a lot of writers feel like this about pitching like um I definitely haven't nailed how to get my voice into every pitch that I do and some it comes easier than others um but that's the key that it's not a job application it's like a piece of art in its own right and if you can kind of somehow find a way to treat it as such then I think that those are the pictures that you read that like really sing and that they're really it's interesting because I think because a lot of writers find them quite hard and awkward and cringe to write it's very hard to get hold of pitch documents or treatments to read them because a lot of writers don't really want to share them because they're a bit like oh that's when I didn't really know what I was doing and then the finished piece of art wasn't that but particularly for some of the big American shows you can get the pictures for some of them online there's like things like script angel and stuff where you can find some of them and it is quite useful and actually there's a tv writer called Chris Lang who wrote um the man, his wife and his canoe. And he wrote, he writes quite a lot of like TV and crime drama. And he has a website where he kind of very generously shares the pictures for everything that he's done and the treatments. Um, and so I think it is really useful to read them as much as you can and kind of so that you can kind of see which ones have a tone that you like and that chimes with your voice and just sort of steal bits from not like steal their show but steal kind of those little turns of phrase that you're like oh actually yeah that's a really good turn of phrase to get this across without it sounding like journalistic or kind of stilted because it's really easy for that stuff to sound quite stilted or for it to sound because the other thing you want to avoid is um like just empty promises like there's no point being like this is going to be really thrilling this is going to be really shocking this is going to be really because because it's easy to say that stuff but you kind of need to also deliver some of that in the pitch um that's kind of the hardest bit I think the bit we've talked about first is sort of the hardest bit um but those I want to tell this story because I think what's really important is you keep that running through all the rest of the exercises so in everything that's on the page that kind of passion for this story needs to come across so in terms of the practical elements that a pitch needs to contain, you need a little bit of why this story and why now that kind of sets up what the drama is going to be about. Um, and then, again, I, as I've said, I'm quite a character driven writer, so I would probably always do this next is like who this story is about and why would anyone care about them? And the key with a pitch is to get that onto the page as succinctly as possible. So we're going to do a little exercise about that. So you can't um, include like whole lengthy character biogs. So you might as a writer know your characters really inside out. You need to find a way to communicate that as immediately and as kind of, oh yeah, I've got them. I've got that person in my head now. I know exactly what kind of character they're talking about. Um, in as few words as possible essentially. So we're going to do an exercise that's sort of exploring that. So again thinking about either a current work in progress or your version of a traditional tale, I want you to choose your central protagonist that the story's about and maybe if there is an obvious antagonist there's ta you can do that as well. Um, so again, we'll spend five minutes in sort of time conditions for you just to splurge 
everything you know about that character. Um, so it doesn't need to be well written at all. It's just like notes for you of everything you know about this character. So where they live, who they live with, what they do for their job, um, what their hopes are, what they eat for breakfast, um, what they wear, what they look like physically. So a complete kind of splurge of everything you know about your central character. We'll spend five minutes doing that and if you, if their backstory is really important to you then that too so everything that kind of you know about this character does that make sense just a complete splurge for five minutes and then we'll come back together again okay great so um let's stop splurging there um and again, this exercise is gonna be about looking back over that list and distilling it. Um, if you are a color coding type person and you have two colors of pen handy, you could use two colors of pen to do this exercise. If you do not have two colors of pen handy, then you can do either circling or starring. So you're gonna look back over your list of things you've written about your character. You might need to add to it to do this. Um, and I want you to circle everything that you think somebody reading your outline needs to know about your character. Like, so if it's very important to the plot that they're a police officer, for example. So circle the things, but be ruthless. Like, what are the things that someone absolutely needs to know about this character for your story to make sense? And it might be that there's, that there's not a lot. It, depending on the format of your story, there might be more. So circle the things that being ruthless, someone absolutely definitely needs to know um, about your character. And then either circle in another colour, or if you have not got two colours handy, then star instead of circle. The things that really give your character colour and that you think someone will know exactly who they are from that. So circle the things that you think someone definitely needs to know and star the things that you think, oh, this is a thing that gives this character colour, that makes them unique, that will paint a picture in somebody's head. So circle for essential and star for really paints the picture, really kind of gives you who this character is. And we'll just spend a few minutes doing that. You've been through your list and you've picked out what you think are the things that are essential that someone knows and also some of those details that kind of give colour. I want you to have a go at writing a maximum of three sentences that gives us your character. So an absolute maximum of three sentences that gives you your character. Um, a kind of like, this is sort of a style thing, but a thing that I like to do sometimes is I'll put like um, the character's name, then in comma, their age, then in comma, if it's important. So if it's a plot thing that I might put um, police officer Liz, comma, 39, and then I might put two adjectives and then I might put something like the kind of person who and it might be like the kind of person who wouldn't be seen dead going out without a lippy on or the kind of person with a voice so loud you'd never get lost in the fog or so that kind of the kind of person who there was a really good thread on Twitter like during the last during the Euros about Gareth Southgate, where someone was like, oh, Gareth Southgate's the ultimate middle-aged crush. He's the kind of man who'd take you to a gynecological appointment and sit outside eating a scotch egg while he waited. And then loads of people replied with all these other things like it. And it just painted such a clear picture of the kind of man that, that he was perceived as. So, so, so I think those kind of things give a nice bit of texture. So if your character's got a routine that they always do, so if it's like, um, Derek, 54, chief investigating officer, the kind of man who brushes his teeth before and after breakfast, to be certain, you know, like, so, so like a little detail from their life that kind of really distills them so that the person reading it straight away, they've got them. That's what you're aiming for, like a maximum of three sentences that gives us your character.
hold it there with those. Um, does anybody have either a character they'd like to introduce us to or anything that they'd like to feed back about how they found the exercise, anything that kind of was challenging about it or anything that actually you surprised yourself about what you realised was or wasn't important about your character? So again, just an opportunity to share if anyone would like to. I don't, I don't mind sharing. Um, um, I've been finding all of these exercises. What's been amazing is I've been discovering loads and loads of stuff. So thank you. That's absolutely awesome. Um, but what I'm struggling with is, you know, like when I uh, to get down to three sentences, it's just like I've got a page full of stuff now, and I'm like, oh, awesome. Now what? To, but getting it down. It's, it's a succinct thing that I struggle with. I just find that so hard. But it's just going to have to be about slowly boiling it all down, isn't it? I th and I think that's what's interesting. I think that's really true, actually. So I'll find, um, just in terms of a process thing, I wonder, I won't show it you because, again, this is why no one ever wants to share their pictures. But I find it takes me a really long time of bubbling an idea and percolating it and like if it's something that I'm just pitching on spec so particularly for TV quite often um you just need to have a number of ideas that then you have a general meeting and a production company will be like oh have you got any ideas and you just need to have some stuff that you can kind of pitch to them and I find that it can take me a re like I'll have like oh I want to write an idea about x y or z and I'll have it bubbling under for quite a long time um but I won't necessarily mention that I've got that idea yet because I won't feel like I'm in a place that I can send them a one pager. And what I sometimes start to do is write like the framework for my one pager. And then I just leave like an X, um, like Liz is, and then I'll leave like blank, 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 and then carry on with the next bit. And then when I feel ready to distill all these character ideas that I've got into a sentence, I'll come back and do that. So I think sometimes you do need to sit with some of that stuff for quite a long time before you're able to distill it. And I think what's quite difficult is, um, I think that's why some writers feel like it would be easier to actually just write the script because yeah. then you could just write the script rather than having to do all the thinking and then be able to distill it in a way that you can explain it. But um, if you get it right, the pitch, it's interesting what you said about discovering stuff as you go it will also help you to write. It will help you get closer to what you want to write. Like I find that the pitch is also useful for me as a touchstone when I'm writing to go back to like, no, what was it I was saying that I was trying to say with this piece of theatre? Like, and it can stop something even in the art itself. You know, it can keep you focused on what actually, what really it is that you're trying to say or explore. Does that make sense? Mm, yeah. Um, Anything else people kind of observe doing it? Okay, so the next exercise is again in a similar vein um, because the next thing that your pitch needs, so you've got a little bit about kind of what this story is about and why you want to tell it. You've got who it's about. You need in your pitch some of what is gonna happen. Now you don't need to have every plot point worked out but you do need to show that you've got enough story to sustain it and you do need if there's like really juicy turns you need to put those on the page so some um I think some people make the mistake of thinking that an outline is a bit like a blurb for a theatre show and that you can have a sort of dot 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 tail off at the end like you can have a four strangers meet in a haunted house but will they survive the night, dot, 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 might be like an invitation to an audience. But if what you're doing is offering your idea to someone you want to make it with you, you need to say whether they survive the night or not. So you need to kind of, you need to know where your story starts. You need to know where it ends and you need to know a couple of big juicy turns along the way um, in order to hook whoever you're taking this idea to in you don't need to have like particularly if it's like a kind of really complex sprawling thing you don't need to have every single plot point worked out because some of that will come out in the writing but you do need to have those kind of 
big turns. And again, you need to be able to communicate them succinctly. So what your outline can't be is like, and then this happens and then this happens. And then because his dog died, he felt like this. So then what, he, you know, you can't have as much detail as you might have in your head. Um, and it shouldn't be like just a list of events. So again, for me, the way I access that is always through the central character. So because we've just been thinking about character, we'll do an exercise that takes that further. So what I'd like you to do is um, thinking about the plot for either your work in progress or your fairy tale retelling, you're going to try and get down the starting point, the end point and a few of the turns along the way. And the format that I'd like you to try and do it in is um, start by telling us about who your central character is and then what they and then what their first action to try and get it is. So, for example, um, Lost in Oz, Dorothy wants to get home and so she sets out to find the Wizard of Oz. So who your character is what they want, what the first action they take to try and achieve what they want is, and then you're going to hit us with a but then. So um, lost in Oz, Dorothy wants to get home, so she sets out to find the Wizard of Oz, but then, and then you're going to tell me your first obstacle or turn, which I've done the Wizard of Oz as an example, and I can't remember what happens first in the Wizard of Oz, but then she beats a, a, a scarecrow without a, you know, but then whatever the first obstacle is that happens. So what your character, your character, what they want, their first action to achieve it, and then a but then, and then carry on from with there with a and so. So what do they do to try and overcome that first obstacle? And then there's another but then. So try and tell your story in a way that's got that shape of this happens, so they do this, but then this happens. So that what you're doing is showing that it's a story that turns rather than just a list of events. And then try and get to an end point. So the person reading this doesn't need to know everything that happens along the way, but they need to know what the A to B that your character or your story is going on. Does that make sense? Okay, just give it a go. Um, it's easier for some stories than others. And um, we'll spend maybe seven or eight minutes on these. Okay, and let's um, just finish the sentence that you're kind of on. Again, I'm sure you haven't had time to kind of distill your whole plot, but just it's like a practice of that technique of this happens and so, but then, rather than kind of listing at the event, it's a way of trying to keep your story um, dynamic, trying to make it feel dramatic in the telling of it, even in this document. And then once you've got those kind of basic plot points. The next stage of writing the pitch would be to kind of really make those sing and make them as visual as possible. So if you have a really clear kind of image, if you feel like there's some standout moments that are really memorable, um, put them in the pitch, like don't save them for later. So Sometimes I quite like to start a pitch with like a bit in italics that's like a moment from it. So um, I did a radio play recently that was about a kind of female politician and the pitch for that started with um, something like Meg's running down a corridor, she runs slap bang into a security guard. Um, he says, where are you going young lady? She says, I'm Meg Stokes, I'm here for the event. He calls into the room, one of Meg Stokes' people's here. She says, I'm not one of her people, I'm her, I'm the MP. Um, so if there's like a little moment that kind of distills, okay, this captures a scene from your drama, or you might open with like, um, 
we're in the woods, someone's running, you know, so you can paint the picture in your pitch as well. So just because you're being succinct, you might still want to put in some of those kind of key images and moments that give it a bit of flavour. Um, but don't get bogged down in the detail of them, like pick the ones that really kind of say something about what the drama as a whole is. And so then once you've got your sort of why this story now, why me, who this story is about, what happens plot wise, I kind of tend to do almost like a conclusion, but the trick is to not make it sound like a conclusion of an essay, but where you smuggle in some of the stuff about like genre and tone and um, kind of like a, like a little summing up. So you might say something like, um, told over X number of episodes. This is a political thriller. And then I tend to do a about, but that's also about where again, you're coming back to that list of why I want to tell this story now. So it might be like, um, so it might be like um, told in, told over, the course of a real fish supper, Chip Shop Chips, is a romantic comedy about um, reconnecting with old loves, but that is also an examination of nostalgia and our obsession with recreating a lost past. So it's like you do the kind of form of the drama, what it's about on the surface, like what the story's about, but also what it's really about. And into that, what it's really about, you're trying to smuggle a sense of that, why me? Like I'm a person who has this insight and kind of summing up with that. And the thing with these pictures is um, the shape of your drama should also dictate the shape of the pitch. So if your piece is really character driven, it might be that the bulk of your document if it's a one pager is like a paragraph on each character and how they relate to each other and the sort of bit of what happens in the story is quite small because actually it's not a plotty piece and if it's a very plotty piece it'll be the other way around and you'll need to smuggle your character stuff in more succinctly in order to make sure you get all those really important plot points across but I think the big thing is to kind of match the tone of this document to the tone of what you're trying to say. I think that's the biggest thing is to not kind of not make it dry. Like people who read these kind of documents read loads of these kind of documents. Like if you're doing it for a call out, they'll be reading absolutely loads of them. But if you're just kind of talking to a producer, they'll read loads of them. And so they you need to make it sing on the page. And I think the other most important thing is to make it, which is why I tend to work from like loads of thinking about it and then distilling it all the time, because what you're really trying to get at in this document for them, but also for you as the writer, is the real truth of why you want to write this. So um, like the MP play I talked about earlier had quite a long and quite a tricky writing process. And actually every time it was difficult, the producer and I would like reread the pitch and be like, why did we want to do this again? Like, what was it we were trying to say with this? So if you get this document right, it also does become something for you that kind of gets to the real heart of what this is and why you're trying to tell this story. Um, so I feel like I've come, you know, I've come to kind of love these documents, having really been quite resistant to them. Um, I still like don't think I've nailed writing them super well, but I think I do enjoy writing them now and see it as kind of a part of the process that is useful. Um, has anyone got any questions? I, I said to Adam, I was like, oh, I'll finish it about half past seven, there's loads of time for questions. And then I have not finished at half past seven, there's loads of times for questions. Um, but there's a little bit of time for questions. If anyone has any questions or any kind of thoughts on hearing it. Um, another exercise that we don't have time to do, but that um, might be useful, Emma, uh, connects to what you were talking about before as well, where what you can do is you write your story out as a page and then you have to go through and halve it. So it's half a page and then you go through and halve that again so that you're getting to like just a sentence in the end. So again, that you write long 
and then try and cut it really brutally and then expand back out. And there's also a nice one that Simon Stevens does that's about telling your plot in a form of a joke. So it's like a man walked into a bar and X, Y, Z happened. So it's just trying to find different ways to distill your idea to as small as possible and then you kind of expand it back out and put some more of the colour and the texture back in. But usually for a kind of pitch document, it's like a maximum of two pages that someone would sit and read. But often people ask for like a one pager in the first instance. And then they might come back to you and say, oh, I'd love to know more. So that's when kind of you might send them like fuller character biographies. So you kind of want to have that stuff there and ready to go but often people want to see a short version first and then they'll come back with questions and that's when you can kind of hit them with more of it rather than bombarding them with all the detail to begin with. Sorry I said I'd do questions and then I just like carried on talking. Has anyone got any questions? I'll be quiet. Um, I've got a question Becky but it might be outside the remit of this work, okay, yeah. which, which has been so, so helpful. Can I just say, like, it's been the dream. Um, uh, so I, I've not written any TV or radio, um, but um, have start, had, had a couple of generals recently. Um, and they've come about, like, they've read a theatre script of mine. I, I think my writing in terms of theatre is quite, like, the act formally theatrical so it's not necessarily the easiest to translate so I am trying to do respect for TV both of those generals have kind of like been like which did take me by surprise but I think you have to pitch a lot more ideas than perhaps you would in a theatre meeting so I was like all oh, right I don't know if I've got and then they've kind of been like yeah we'd love to read some more stuff when you've got it I suppose my I'm, I'm kind of wondering like should that be a spec or should that be a, a pitch or do you know like what like what's um, better is it better to tease and be like well here's a pitch for like something i'm writing or you know not have ha with them not having read do you know what i mean like what it's probably different every time but yeah i think it is different every time is what i was i think it slightly depends so sometimes like um so for people don't who don't know in tv there's um a kind of meeting called a general meeting which is basically someone might have read something of yours or seen something of yours and they're kind of interested in you and your voice as a writer but they haven't got a specific project to offer you and they're not saying they're going to buy that piece of work so it's the sort of sounding each other out chat and quite often in a general which I did not realize the first time I went to a general they were like have you got any ideas so I, I was like no not really I'm not working on it but it's like don't ever go to a general with nothing to pitch like you need to have a couple of things that you're like oh I'm kind of interested in this territory at the moment um so yeah sometimes if I've kind of pitched if in the general like something's come up like oh I'm really interested in um personal trainers and the relationship people have with their personal trainers at the moment and if I've got a sense in the general that oh they find that interesting thematically too then rather than following up with a spec I'd follow up with a pitch about that but if I hadn't felt like there was something that we necessarily kind of touched on that I thought oh they're definitely going to be interested in this and I just thought oh actually I'd like to develop that relationship then I'd maybe be more likely to follow up with a, another spec rather than a pitch um it kind of depends at what point you want someone, because the other thing about generals is, um, who was it? This? I can't remember who it was that said this to me, but it's it's more like a date than a job interview. Like you're not just presenting yourself to them. You're also trying to sound out because if you sell them an idea, you're going to be working with them. Like things in TV are in development for a long time. You're going to be working with them too. So you also want to be sure that the chemistry is right and that it's someone that you'd want to work with on that idea. Um, So yeah. I think it's like I wouldn't pitch something to someone if they weren't the person that I wanted to develop like like your ideas are precious do you know what I mean so it's like like with chip shop chips 
I took it to Adam because I knew that it would be something that I'd want to make with Box of Tricks because I knew that they'd get what that idea was. So sometimes in a general, you can get a sense quite quickly of, oh, you know what, I think we'd make something really funny together. But if the sense you get from them is like, oh, yeah, well, I want to stay on these people's radar because I'd like them to commission me at some point but I don't necessarily want to give them one of my precious ideas at this stage, then you don't need to feel obliged to pitch them something. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. That's, that's super helpful. Uh, thanks. That's so great. And what I, in terms of generals, what I only started to do this quite recently now is I keep like a spreadsheet of who I've met, what company they're from and like what we talked about, like in terms of what the general chit chat was and if there were kind of any topics that came up that felt like, mutual areas of interest so that then I can make a note that oh well when that pitch about personal trainers is ready I need to remember to send it to that person um because they're a bit of a weird one generals but in order to get the most from them I kind of try and keep track of like oh, okay well we did talk a little bit about like the demise of going to the pub maybe I could pitch them something in that territory um does that make sense yeah that's really helpful as well yeah <laughs> thank you Bye. oh it is eight o'clock but if anyone does have any more any last questions yeah nobody's got any final questions okay well great um well thank you very much becky i mean that's been an absolutely fantastic session um it's you know like you know working in theatre you know like from our point of view I often treatments come in as you, you would talk about earlier once you've already kind of talked about an idea and actually trying to pitch trying to condense an idea and just sell it that's you know it's really really hard work but so yeah thank you for today tonight's masterclass. um in terms of upcoming events, I just want to do a bit of uh, promotion um we've got some upcoming masterclasses in the new year um, so keep an eye out for those uh, with Conway McDermott and uh, Danica Etchells. Um, we've also got our Playmakers Takeover on uh, 21st of January. It's an all-day new play extravaganza. Uh, so do join us for that at home in Manchester. Um, and um, I think that's it for now. Um, but thank you very much, everyone, for joining us and, and participating in the in Masterclass. Um, and um, we'll see you all soon. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Bye everyone. now.